Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jaden Irwin, and today we're actually gonna be going through an 11D crash course. So this is part one of, I don't know how many parts there's gonna be, <laughs> but this is the first part. Um, and really just going through the process of setting up an 11D project. If you haven't heard of 11D, um, it is probably one of the biggest static site generators that's being used today. Um, I know there's a few other really popular ones like Jekyll and Hugo, but it seems like 11D has kind of replaced those two um, and kind of the space that they live. Uh, and feel free to do your own research on it. It's 11D.dev is the website for it. So literally the number 11ty.dev. Um, pretty cool name actually, easy to remember, which I like. But basically, it is a sort of no batteries included type of approach to a static site generator, which is different than my previous series that I did on Astro. Astro is also a static site generator, but it's definitely more of a more batteries included approach. So 11D, you sort of get to decide what you use as far as your JavaScript bundler. You get to decide how you want to set up your CSS and how that gets used inside of your templates. So there's just a lot more decisions that you need to make but that can be a good thing for a lot of different reasons and different types of projects. Um, 11D also has some really cool plugins that I like. If you go into their site, you can actually click on that big banner and that will go to their documentation. And then if you look through, there's a lot of documentation, which is great. I will say 11D is a little bit more mature than Astro. It's been around for a little bit longer, um, quite a bit longer actually and it is at 1.0 so technically it's in what they would call a stable phase um, i think astro is pretty stable but there's still a lot of decisions being made on astro around how to do certain things so i feel like uh, 11d is a little bit more set in its ways of how to do something in 11d which i do like um, especially if you're working on a big project that you're planning on we really need something that's super stable and the api is not going to change too much 11D might be a good choice for you. So um, you can start with some starter projects if you want. That's a good starting point for any of these types of tools and generators. Feel free to go to their starter projects and just clone one if you want, if you find one that you like. Um, but I kind of normally take the approach of I want to make my own starter and have it built in with the opinions that I have around how to use a particular tool. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm really going to start from scratch. So if we go into VS Code, um, you'll see that we're going to open a new or create a new folder. We're going to call this 11D Crash Course. And I've already got a terminal set for that. I did a little bit of preemptive stuff here, but let's just go ahead and clear the terminal. And we're going to npm init dash y. So we're going to create a new npm package for inside of this folder. And if we refresh, I'm going to go ahead and kill the terminal real quick and bring it back. CD 11D. Let's do that npm. I think it's because I deleted the folder. Um, so let me just add it back real quick. There we go. Perfect. So we've got our package.json. So npm init dash y to just take the defaults, right? And then really to set up 11D, there's not too much you need to do to get started, but there are gonna be a lot of decisions that you have to make around styles and all of that. But to start and just get some HTML running, it's super simple. So let's go ahead and npm i dash d for development dependency. And we're gonna do at 11D, 11TY. Let me make that text a little bit bigger too. Slash 11d spelled out perfect that's going to install it's a pretty small package and it is on 1.0.0 i believe so yeah right there 1.0.0 so they just hit 1.0 last year late last year um, so exciting to see that they're out of the beta phase and then what we're going to do is go in here let's create a new folder this is a setup that i like you don't have to set up your 11D project this way necessarily. Feel free to do your research on other setups. But I like to do a source directory. And then that is where I'm going to put my index.html file. 
So this is like your source directory where everything is going to live, right? And then on the base directory, we're going to do our dot elevendy dot js file. So this is our config file for elevendy. This is where you get to make those decisions of how you want your elevendy structure for your project to work. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this module dot exports. So this is where it's a little bit different. Eleven D uses CJS or Common JS for its imports and everything, so you do have to use uh, CJS for all of that. And I believe that's changing in the future. They'll have a little bit better support for more modern uh, imports, uh, ESM and all of that. But that's kind of how it is right now. So we're going to do Eleven D config. Copilot's help helping me out already. I don't want to do this Piper though, so let's go ahead and escape that. And we're just going to close this export. So this is the function that holds or passes through our 11 d config. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this return, mainly because it's got a few lines in it. But basically what's going on here is our directory, we're sort of overriding the default for 11 d So 11 d likes to do a site folder as your site default. Um, but I like to do this source folder, so input is src our source so that's our input our includes is going to be the underscore includes folder and we can go ahead and create that so we'll go into our source create a directory of includes perfect and then our output is underscore site and i'm going to leave that because that is the default um, template formats so this is one thing that is unique to 11 is it supports a bunch of different template formats. You can use Markdown for your templating. You can use uh, something called Nunjux, which is a unique, uh, it's been around for a while, but it's a templating language that is similar to Liquid, if you have any background with Liquid. Um, but it does allow for more JavaScript, or just JavaScript in general, in your templates. So it's like Liquid, but with logic inside of it. And then HTML also as our template format. So Markdown template engine, Nunjux, HTML, Nunjux, and data, also Nunjux. So I like to take this approach where, and this is actually a pretty recent thing from research of playing around with Eleventy to do this course, but I actually realized that you can use Nunjux templates inside of just a normal HTML file. And I'll show you how that works. So let's go ahead and just get started doing a normal document here and we'll get some code running. So let's go into our package JSON and we're actually going to add a start command. And let's just do npx 11 dash dash serve as our start command. And this is going to serve our project and it'll use 11 to serve it, right? And then there's just our default HTML, right? Let's put an h1 on there just to make sure and we'll say I am the home page we're gonna do npm start you'll see it runs our 11 d dash dash serve command and it's on localhost 8080 I believe you can override that but I'm okay with the default let's just go ahead and open it I am the home page perfect and that is running just as you'd see and if we add a paragraph here I am also on the home page. Perfect. And you'll see that it refreshes automatically, which is great, super fast. Um, 11D is really lightweight in that way that it is fast, has a good dev server, and you really just have a lot of customization of how you want that to work. You can also set 11D to just build your files to this underscore site. And then you could use another dev server if you wanted to. So it's pretty cool that 11D does give you that much flexibility that you can use it just for the build step if you want and then do all the dev server stuff with something else. It's that um, flexible and there's just a lot of options with it. So let's go ahead and look through and you'll see that I'm actually gonna take a very similar approach that I did with the Astro Crash Course on my also on my channel. Um, the Astro Crash Course, we sort of just started with this HTML template file, or this HTML file, and then work backwards from that. So how do we start to use some of the templating features of Eleven D to be able to build a much larger site efficiently with Eleven D? 
And that's really where this includes and the nunjux templates come in. So we're going to go into this underscore includes and we're going to create a new directory called layout. And I haven't really explained the includes yet because I think it's better to actually see how it works. So we're going to do layouts base dot HTML inside of that layouts folder. And we kind of have that approach of like, I want to create another page, but if I want to create another page, I don't want to have to copy all of this to that contact page, right? So what we're going to do is actually copy all of this, take it to our base HTML, and then if you look at this like it's a template, you can sort of see the parts that you want to keep consistently for multiple pages, and then fill in the parts that you want the other pages to take control of. And usually that's the content, right? So we're going to cut that, put it back on our home page. Let's delete everything from that and just have our content there. And then our content falls right into the body tag, right? And then you're going to see I'm going to do these double curly brackets. That is a um, for nunjux. So we're going to do content and then a pipe. And we're going to say safe. So we're saying anything that is content for whatever's using this template, this page layout, it is safe to pass in inside of this body. Perfect. And then title, same thing. We're going to replace this document. And let's just use the title for the title, right? So let's save that. And you'll notice that if we go back, it's still showing it, but it's not using our template. Um, and that's because we're actually not setting the layout yet. And that is something that you need to do at the top. We're going to do these fences, so the three dashes at the top, sort of like a markdown file. And then I know this is an HTML file, but remember back in our .11d.js that we have our nunjux is our HTML template language. So we can use nunjux inside of HTML because of that. So we're just going to go here at the top, layout, colon, and we're going to do includes. Oh, sorry. Includes is not there. Uh, layouts. It comes from the includes, base.html. So think of this includes as anywhere that I want to use it. It's just included, right? Whatever's inside of this included includes folder. It's included for me to use wherever I'd like. And you'll see some other examples of that here in a second too. But let's just set our layout and we're going to set the title. Remember, we're passing the title into this base.html right here. We're going to go here to the title and say 11D crash course number, let's just say number one. Let's save that. And then, yep, just a refresh on that. I think it's because of the, all the changes I made on that file. I just did a manual refresh there. And there's 11D crash course. Let's go ahead and inspect it real quick. And it's probably this number one that's throwing some issues there. So yeah, it doesn't like the number. Maybe if we wrap it in quotes, it'll take it. Yep, so that's what it was. So yeah, it's passing our title to the document, 11D crash course number one. And what's cool is we can use nunjux inside of the content too. So let's say we want to replace this H1 with that title. So double curly brackets, same as our template here. Title should now be, there you go, 11D crash course number one. So. That's pretty cool to be able to go in here, create your own template files. It's very similar to Astro in that way that it does have a templating language that sort of just works. And you can pass, pass things through to those template files really easily. Maybe a little bit of a different approach, but uh, same concept, right? So title, um, let's go ahead and create another page that also uses this layout. Um, we'll start there. So we'll do contact html and then we're going to do those fences again at the top let's do layout and let's go ahead and do uh, layouts again base.html and then we want the title oh 
title to be contact page. And let's just do another H1. I am the, and then we get, again, we can use the templates, right? So I am the title. We'll pass title into that. Now, if we go to forward slash contact manually, I am the contact page, just like that. Now, let's add a link. Um, there might You might be coming from maybe a React background, Gatsby, or something like that. Um, it is just as simple, because we're just writing really HTML, to just do a good old href slash contact. And let's close that. We'll do go to contact. There you go. Go to contact and it goes there. So it's just HTML, right? That's the best part, my favorite part about these static site generators um, and sort of this new trend of let's embrace HTML, let's use what the web browser already does really well. Um, and so yeah, just HTML right there, a good old href, go to contact. You could even say go to the contact page. Super fast update, go to the contact page just like that. Perfect. So I think the last piece I want to show is how you can use includes inside of other things. And sort of like a component, but not quite like a component. Um, a good example is our head. Maybe our head tag, we want to be separate from this template. That's really easy to do. So remember, we have includes and then layouts. And then we have a base.html layout. Well, includes is the parent folder, so we actually could go in here to includes, call this base head .html, and let's go back to our base. We're going to cut out not the whole head, I don't think. You could do it that way. I like to take what's inside of the head tag, and let's just cut that out. We'll do base head right here. This is the base head content, right? Now, our head tag, it's going to be missing. Let's see if we can open it here. Yeah, so see our head tag's now empty. And we want to pass in that head content to it. So let's close that. We'll go back here. And that's actually super easy to use. Um, so I have this really cool extension called Nunjux Snippets, I believe. Yeah, so this is a VS Code extension. I would recommend installing it. It's a time saver for me when I'm using 11D. Nunjux snippets works great. Nunjux for VS Code right there. Um, that's all I did there to do this include, but we can manually type it too. So if we go back, you're gonna do curly brackets, but it's not double curly brackets because we're not passing content in. We're actually using um, what would be called a short code. So that's where the uh, percentage sign comes in. So curly bracket percentage sign, include, and then we're going to do base head dot HTML. And now let's inspect. There you go. It's passing it through just like that. So base head dot HTML right there. And we're including the base head dot HTML file or whatever's inside of that right here. So you can imagine how you could do that with a lot of different things, but really common ones would be like the header, right? So like above the body, maybe you want to do a header, and then that get, could get pretty big depending on what is inside of the header. So you can move it out into its own file and have it not really messy up your template or your layout. Um, so that's really cool. You know, we can do the include, but there's another really cool thing called blocks. Um, and maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but this is a pretty cool feature of the Nunjux templates. We can do a block, call it head, and then we can actually use this like layout and extend this layout. So let's say we want the contact page to use a different layout than this base layout. Um, you can actually go in here to layouts, and we could call this contact html and instead of having to copy all of this again maybe this just needs to extend the base layout 
that's really easy to do. So you'd go to contact.html inside of the layout, extends, and we're going to do extends layout base.html. So same thing again, extends includes, those are kind of like hot words that you can use with Nunjex templates. And then let's say we wanted the, uh, for example, like the contact page to have a little bit more inside of the head than just what's in this base head. Maybe we want it to have a description. Um, I would recommend putting your description on all of the pages, but this is just for example. So we have a block of head right here at the end of the head tag. So we can go into our contact.html. We can do another block called head, same name. And because it's extending the base.html layout, it just inherits it right so there's already a block called head and because it's extending it it's going to just extend right here and I'll show you that so let's go back here and let's do description um, name equals it should be right there content let's close that meta tag and then in quotes here, let's do those double curly brackets, description. So in this case, the description should only show up on something using the contact layout. So let's test it. Let's go to our contact.html. Instead of using the base.html, let's use the, sorry if you hear my dog. So let's go ahead and test it. You'll see that we have contact.html as our layout now. And if we pass in a description, hey, I'm on, and we probably should use quotes if we're gonna do that. So hey, I'm on the contact page only. So this is really powerful because you're able to use a base layout and then only have parts of it on other layouts, right? Um, so let's test it. We'll go to our contact page. Let's go here to our head tag and look at that. There's our meta description being passed in right there. So only the contact page has the description. If we go back, we'll open the head tag no description. So I know it's pretty complex at the start, but this creates for some really cool layout setup that we're going to work on in the future um, of styles. So really cool ways to use this block of head and have it extend the base head exactly where we want it to. Um, and I think that's probably enough for the first video. The second video, we're probably going to go through more like how to set up styles, how to set up images, those types of things. Um, maybe eventually we'll use Eleventy's image plugin as well and show how that would work. But I think that's it for today. Um, I know I kind of covered a lot on the layout, but I think if you start to play around with the layouts and the way that these blocks and these includes work, you can have a really powerful setup with Eleventy that can expand to a, a very large site really easily and you can pass content at it as much as you want markdown files or with a headless CMS or something like that um, but yeah that's really it for today if you have any questions I'm sure you do <laughs> um, I'm happy to answer them as best I can in the comments below and uh, definitely join the 11 community too if you have questions if you go to 11 site they've got their discord link right up here um, and you can join their Discord if you have any questions too. So yeah, I hope you guys have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, I'll see you in the comments below. Peace.